All right, back in the pits. Let's transform this thing. Yeah. The sun's out. And the sun's out. <laughs> Perfect timing. All right. Welcome back to the channel. Today is a significant day. And not because I'm at Silverstone surrounded by supercars, but uh, this is actually the first time that I have officially been involved with both Mercedes and AMG on one of their official projects and activations. I know that I featured plenty of Mercedes and AMGs on the channel over the weeks, over, over the months lately, um, but it's the first time that I've actually partnered with them directly. And today is a super significant occasion because AMG have taken over the entirety of Silverstone to celebrate 50 years of AMG. So they brought down 50 models of AMGs from classics all the way up to the latest AMG GTR. Uh, and as much as I'd love to jump in all of them, they're a fantastic SLS Black Series AMG here, which is uh, one of my favorites. Of course, it's one of the last naturally aspirated cars that uh, AMG made. Today, I'm gonna continue my hunting for a convertible series because of course, Mercedes and AMG have recently launched the AMG GTC and lo and behold, they have one here. So let's uh, take a look around at what spicy stuff they've got and then hop in the GTC, see what it's all about. in the GTC I'm with Elliot who is the senior instructor for AMG how did you wangle that title I had a rather misspent childhood <laughs> picked up some car control along the way and awesome here we are. yeah that yeah aka chief of going sideways um, yeah me and Elliot first met in well it was around the Monza Grand Prix yes it and was. we you, you brought a C63 down was yep. it and we, uh, yeah, we ended up setting up a drift battle between uh, Valtteri Bottas and Felipe Massa. Yeah, we ruined yeah. a few sets of uh, That's right. good times. Yeah, yeah. And now, interestingly, this for me is actually the first official introduction of both AMG and Mercedes to my channel. Great. I've, stuff. I've jumped in a few cars, but I've, I've never worked with you guys directly. Um, so this is super, super cool. Good. Super excited. Um, I want to pick your brains. I was out in the uh, GTR earlier. Yep. How does how is is this similar or dissimilar? I I car? was amazed at the GTC because you know better than anyone. If you chop the roof off a car, yep. normally they wallow. For you lose sure. a lot of the rigidity. Yes. In this, you won't notice a difference in terms of the mid corner balance. Okay. Which normally it kind of feels like the bat's going to try and get away from you and sure. that kind of stuff. Uh, the differences between this and the GTR. It's probably nine tenths of what both cars are capable of is where you'll feel the difference. So it's pretty similar then. Incredibly. Pretty similar. So yeah. do we have any difference in gearbox mapping or suspension stiffness? No, so the suspension they're absolutely identical. Slightly less power in this, so we're down at 550. Only only 550. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll see how you get on with it. Yeah. And Fantastic. we're uh, still the same four litre V8 by turbo engine. So what I was thinking about doing was a lap in with the roof up. And then lap with roof down. I'm just gonna let this guy go past as we uh, warm up and talk. Um, yeah, because I I reckon the speed that we hopefully get up to later, we're not gonna hear much with the roof down. No. So let's chat about it with the uh, roof up first and then get on it and see. 
First of all, they sound mega. This, I think, has more rawness to it than the GTR, which I didn't expect. This actually sounds better than the GTR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is weird. Is it just because the roof hasn't got as much insulation? Yeah, I think so. I really think it has to be. Oh. It's, it's lovely, isn't it? It's so well balanced. And you see there, it just holds the road. Lovely. In that it's very flat. That feeling that you get in some yeah. sort of convertibles. The pops and bangs on the overrun. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? Doesn't matter how long I work with AMG. You love it. It never gets old. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is really cool because every other manufacturer that I've worked with on on this series, which is shopping for a convertible, none of them have put us on track. Yeah. So this is awesome. Oh, this is really, really nice experience. And you haven't lost any of the uh, driving ability that I remember. Cheers, man. <laughs> <laughs> Brakes are good, aren't they? Yeah. So, are you able to option this with ceramics, or does it come with ceramics? No, it comes with. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, very cool. I tell you, do you know what? The engineering on this, the way that the balance of this, considering that it's considered, a, you know, front to mid engines, it's so it's beautiful. The weight distribution is incredible. So Absolutely. much confidence in it. I don't think I doesn't feel like a like a big like a big car at all, or a big heavy car. Yeah, it's beautiful. So this gearbox isn't a twin clutch, is it? It's one of those torque vectoring jobs? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, early versions of that weren't, weren't as quick as this. This is, I would, if I didn't know, I would say this is a twin clutch yeah. box. And I'm very impressed with it. It doesn't feel like that long ago that you felt in it also that you were kind of getting three second delays. Yeah, absolutely. And now it's just seamless. It's so, so seamless. And of course, the benefit of a gearbox like this is it can deal with so much more torque. Yep. That was one of the problems with a twin clutch box is it doesn't cope, especially now you've gone turbocharged on these. It's, so, it's thick. Like, the torque in this is almost tangible. Yeah. It's, it's the, the so... Is, it's all well and good having high amounts of horsepower, but if you can't get that power down... Yeah, to yeah, exactly. It's as good as makes no difference, which yeah. is where these kind of uh, gearboxes really come into their own. So how much time on your on your average day's work, what percentage is forwards and what percentage is sideways? <laughs> well, ironically, before we came out, I was getting some uh, external footage yeah. and I got a radio call from Race Control saying, there's an E63S formatic going more sideways than forwards. <laughs> to which I had to reply, yeah, I'm really sorry it's me. <laughs> sorry about that. No, it's brilliant. I tell you what, I'm really... What? My, my take on the sign of a good car is, when you're confident with it from a very early stage. Yeah. Like, I'm not scared of this car at all. I mean, it's just super planted. I don't know if you kind of did much in the SLS, but if you compare the SLS Roadster to the GTC. Oh, uh, but it's night and day, is it? It's not, and it's only because of how far the technology's come on. Yes. But you don't get that pitch and wallow, but sure. the back feels nicely stable. Yeah, it's incredible. It's gonna be right on my apex. <laughs> <laughs> That's compromise your corner speed. Right. <laughs> so is it kind of behaving as you expected? Be cut to totally truthful, I thought it might be more understeery than it is. It's the front end's really lovely, it's really planted. The back end doesn't want to spit you out. Uh, fortunately, we've managed to get on the track when it's dried up, which is cool. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, it's lovely, you know. And even when it does, you know, when it does let go a little, it's not, it doesn't snap, does it? It's it kind not, of tells you that it's happening. It tells you it's going. <laughs> it's not a surprise. Lovely thing. Right, I'm gonna do one more lap with the roof up, and then let's take the roof down. Perfect. All right, back in the pits. Let's transform this thing. Yeah. The sun's out. <laughs> Perfect timing.
So mate, thanks for that Pleasure. last Absolute minute pleasure. drift. <laughs> this guy's got the best job. <laughs> Mr. Sideways is so cool. Absolutely awesome. It's not mate. fast, but it looks better. Yeah, I was just say it's the best way around the corner. Sideways is the best way around the corner. Um, yeah, so I'd like to get your thoughts on it. Actually, I mean, obviously I, I know you work for the, the brand, but uh, what's your, your favorite thing about AMG? I think for me, the relationship between Mercedes-Benz and AMG is as close to the perfect balance as you can get. Yep. Because as brands, they have very different philosophies. Mercedes sure. is all about luxury, safety, innovation. Yep. And AMG, racing, performance. Sideways. So <laughs> <laughs> everything you've just done in this yes. is the very limit of what it's capable of. For sure. But when yeah. you sit in it and you look around, it's still comfortable, Super it's a nice place to be. Yeah. So it's, it's essentially a hybrid of the best of both worlds. Yeah. Really. For me personally, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I really felt that. I mean, we were hammering it around just then. You were putting it around fantastically. It's so, I love, being in, in the seat when someone show you what it's capable of, yeah. it's so good. So thanks for that, man. I really oh, appreciate pleasure, it. Mate. Absolutely. Cheers, dude. <laughs> that thing's amazing. Uh, excuse the offensive helmet hair. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been in and out of Skiddlers all day. What can I say? Uh, twin turbo, four litre V8. Pops and bangs on the overrun, fantastic. Enhanced even further, of course, by taking off the roof. Now, let's talk about that. When you take the roof, off a car, there can be issues with structural rigidity. It's that thing, and if there was anywhere to demonstrate, you know, how well engineered that car is, it's on a track at those speeds. Pitching it into corners, it felt super flat. There was no play in the chassis. It was a wonderful experience. Um, gearbox. Now, if you watch this channel regularly, you'll know that I'm kind of a gearbox snob. I'm either, I'd, I'd either prefer a manual or a dual clutch box. I'm super happy to say that these new torque vectoring gearboxes, which is more of a conventional auto, it's just, you know, we're really splitting hairs now between shift times and, and shift sort of crisp feel between these torque vectoring boxes and a twin clutch box. In that car, I was super impressed. And what you're essentially getting in the GTC Roadster is the GTR with the roof off. It doesn't have quite as much power. I've driven them both and I, I don't know why you wouldn't go. I don't know why, particularly on the road, I don't know why you wouldn't seriously consider the Roadster. It's the full package. You lose a little bit of practicality having no space in the boot, but from a driving experience, super cool. What I really want to do next is spend more time with AMGs on the road. Track environment's one thing. It's fantastic to be able to open them up and give it 10 tenths. And as you can see, with the E-diff on these AMGs, as Elliot demonstrated earlier, they go sideways just as well as they always have done. But if you want to drive it with a bit more precision, it just hunkers down, super flat, super planted. And really importantly for me, is when you get in these cars, um, from a very, a very early stage, you feel it's very confidence inspiring. And so even though the back end can step out like that, if you want to drive it chilled and calm and precise, it's equally as good as that. I think Elliot summed it up well earlier, uh, that these cars really are this, this great match, this great balance between refinement and sportiness. Anyway, let me know. Let me know what your thoughts are. If there's any AMG fans watching, any Mercedes fans watching, uh, thoughts on GTC Roadster, AMG as a brand, love to hear from you. Like, subscribe, share, really appreciate you guys watching and your support. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.